Alright guys, so... <laughs> we finally have the details for the new LR Frieza N17, as well as the um, LR Goku 17, Frieza, Gohan, and Vegeta, or basically Team uh, 7. <laughs> I, I mean, if you guys can't tell, I'm very, very excited, and I'm really overwhelmed, because I actually have quite a uh, videos, because I've already put up their animation, so if you haven't already, go check them out. And then I also have the details for the one Escanor, as well as the t uh, as well as the one year anniversary for Grand Cross, which I do need to get up and make sure you guys check out if you guys want to. So this is going to be um, Golden Frieza and Android 17. Of course, the translations are courtesy of Goresh, and the unit is physical, I believe, just based off of the um, color that uh, Goresh decided to go with for the um, LR, uh, you know, name. So Gohan and Frieza. Uh, not Gohan and Frieza, um, <laughs> Frieza and Android 17, uh, they're a universal survival saga or joint forces 3 key 150%, so very good buff for joint forces, getting a better, um, leader as well, and another leader, because so far, I believe the only leaders are Kao Khalifla, the, um, Kao King Goku and Evolution Blue Vegeta, and now, um, this LR, their 12 key limit breaking rush greatly raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage, uh, their 18 key final suicide attack raises attack for one turn, causes mega colossal damage, and lowers attack and defense. So not the greatest super attack effects, but again, their 18 key, at least they lower attack and defense, so they have some usefulness in things like super battle road and, and other difficult content like that. Their passive, the final key, 70% attack and defense. They have a nut, so they have a 70% attack and defense at the start of turn, if I could please get my words Please brain work. They have a great chance to launch up to two additional attacks, so a 70% chance. Uh, they get 7% attack and defense and one key with each attack performed, max of 70% attack and seven key. So basically they need to attack a total of 10 times to get their max um, attack and defense, which is 70%. And they need to attack a total of seven times in order to get the seven key. And again, because they have the great chance built into their passive, Re I mean, realistically, you are going to get three attacks in one turn with them, so it's not going to be that hard to get them fully maxed out. And then I'm not even counting, uh, you know, the some odd times that they're going to be able to get their um, hit a, uh, hidden potential um, additional or super attack, because again, because they're physical, they get um, a 5-2 additional automatically at 55%. Uh, reduces damage received, and it increases critical hit chance by 7% during the turn, for each attack performed in the turn, so basically, after one attack, they have a seven. In, they have a seven percent chance to uh, crit, and they have seven percent damage reduction. After two attacks, 14, 3, 21, and then at four attacks, they have 28 percent. So a little buff right here at the end, but again, it's really not going to be that. I would say apparent. Uh, I mean, the damage reduction for sure is going to be apparent, but, you know, the crit chance might not as much. And then they also have an active skill. Universe 7 Survival Tactics can be used after launching four super attacks during battle. This is going to be super easy. Actually, no. That's four super attacks. If, if it was just four attacks, then this is like a god-easy active skill, but uh, four super attacks is not going to be that bad. Um, I assume you could even see this in uh, Dokkan events, I believe. They get 7 key and 77% defense and perform a critical hit for one turn. This is going to be very good. Again, on top of their 140% attack and defense, a 77% defensive buff, and it's an active skill buff. They're going to, I mean, their defense is going to be through the moon. I would easily say that their defense is going to break maybe 300k, like fully built up, rainbowed with the active skill uh, and support. They're easily going to be over 300k after that. And then Link's Tough as Nails, a defensive Link. Brainiacs, defensive Link. Solid support. Maybe not solid support. Maybe don't give them solid support. Maybe, um, no. So they have Shocking Speed, Fierce Battle. Uh, maybe over in a Flash would have been better than solid support. But, you know, it is what it is. Tournament of, uh, of Power, another defensive Link. Uh, they give, I, th I think it gives like 3 key and like 7% attack and defense. Fierce Battle and then Legendary Power. And then they're on Battle of Wits, another buff to that category. Joint Forces for sure needed it. Reps of Universe 7 and Universal Survival Saga. 
uh, and this is their card art. Looks very, very nice. This is from their fight with Jiren after uh, Seventeen uses the uh, kind of like final suicide attack to knock Jiren on his knees. And then again, this is the Team Universe Seven, and unfortunately, uh, and unfortunately, Gohan's face is covered. <sighs> and they're gonna be Int, which is gonna be very good. And it's just called Android Seventeen Team Universe Seven, which is gonna be very good because it leaves. Uh, the opportunity to give us another variation of this unit, you know, just called 17 Frieza, Vegeta, Goku, and Gohan. And they are reps of Universe 7, 4 key, 150% to stats, so very good leader skill. That 4 key is going to be very beneficial. And Super Int need, uh, really needed a buff, so 4 key, 100% to that. And then 12 key, Asol Drive, greatly raises attack and raises allies' defense by 30%, so already very good LR. 18 key assault barrier causes mega colossal damage raises allies defense by 30% and crit chance by 7% for one turn so very good LR uh, maybe not the best for himself because again he's not raising his own defense by 30% he's raising his allies but that's going to be very beneficial for some of the weaker uh, units on reps of universe 7 so uh, still a pretty good LR just based off of his super attack effects but again I would have preferred if he also gave it to himself. Passive human-like, attack and defense plus 70%. He gains an additional 70% attack and defense if there are five or more reps of Universe 7 category allies on the team. So already you want to run him on reps of Universe 7. 70% attack when key is 22 or higher, so you do want to get, um, you know, 24 key with this LR. They get two key in addition per rainbow keys for obtained, so that's going to be very beneficial for them because, again, they're going to give themselves key in their passive, and then, of course, they want to have high key um, in order to get that extra attack buff. And then gain an additional 7% chance to perform a critical hit per Rainbow Key Sphere obtained. So they're going to be very Rainbow Key Sphere hungry, which is honestly going to be a bit of an issue, because, again, the Evolution Blue Vegeta and the uh, Kaioken Goku are also already built in a way that they want Rainbow uh, Key Spheres, so giving us more Rainbow Orb Changers Hopefully in the form of the free-to-play units, uh, the Master Roshi and the uh, Krillin and 18. Hopefully they, uh, you know, change Rainbow Key Spheres. And hopefully the free-to-play Master Roshi, when he gets his EZA, probably in Part 3, um, also changes Rainbow uh, Key Spheres just so that, you know, you have units that you can run this um, LR with. But already very good LR. Um, again, you do want to basically run them on reps of Universe 7 is where they're being limited to. But again, I don't think that's a bad idea or a bad thing in general. I mean, you can probably run them on Universal Survival Saga because, again, you're probably going to run Goku, Vegetas, and all those uh, types of units on Universal Survival Saga anyways. And then they also have um, an active skill, Universe 7's All Out Attack can be used when there are five of more reps of Universe 7 category allies on the team. So again, very limited to reps of Universe 7. And there are two other reps of Universe 7 allies other than this unit attacking in the same turn. So again, very limited to reps of Universe 7, which again, is not a bad thing. But again, it is disappointing that you're really not going to see this active skill other than with reps of Universe 7. And there's one enemy whose HP is 50% or below. Again, like the Blue Fusions, temporarily greatly raises attack and causes ultimate damage and all allies 7 key for one turn, so very, very good effect, just like Master Roshi's, um, I believe it is, active skill as well, where he gives the whole rotation key. Link's Android Assault, that's not a good Link already, uh, just because, again, other than MVP 17, uh, there's not a whole lot of good Android units that you can run on Reps of Universe 7, but again, this Link at Link level 10 is actually pretty decent. Infinite Energy, same thing, again, only MVP 17 is really going to have that, and this also at level 10 is a decent link, so you really do want to run this unit with MVP 17, because again, he's going to also have Tournament of Power and Fierce Battle, solid support, again, if you pull both of the LRs, again, you can run these two together, realistically, as a rotation, Fierce Battle, and then Legendary Power, and then their categories, Reps of Universe 7, Universal Survival Saga, and Joint Forces, so really, I would say run these two as a rotation is the best bet and the best option. Just because, again, he's limited to reps of Universe 7. And then this unit in general, I would say, just wants to be run with other, uh, you know, Tournament of Power units in order to get... Because, I mean, they share Solid Support, Shocking Speed, Tournament of Power, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. So they, so they literally share 5 out of 7 links. So, you know, it's a very good idea to run these two together. 
and then I would say the god rotation would be MVP 17, the physical one, this unit in the middle, because he's going to get Android Assault and Infinite Energy, and then of course the other LR, which is the 17 and Frieza. Uh, that would may basically give him every single link active, and then of course this unit, um, you know, you'd have to probably search for a unit that has Brainiacs and Tough as Nails, uh, you know, especially with the limited categories that he's on, because he's only on four, but you know, you could realistically get all of their links active, and if you do, you know, this unit is absolutely going to be disgusting. And just a final thing before, you know, I end the video. Um, I would highly suggest to go to the Truth's channel because again, the Truth is probably going to have videos of them fully linked level 10. Um, you know where he is able to get Hydros um, is uh, um, Hydros's um, application in order to you know showcase the units. So again, I would check out the Truth's channel uh, for that. But until then, that is going to do it for today's video. Unfortunately, again, I don't have any stones on JP, and because I'm on iOS, it's really hard to, uh, you know, get um, Japanese Apple Store, you know, cards over here since I'm in the US. Uh, but, you know, if I can try to find a way how to do it, I'll for sure make a summoning video on it. But again, I would actually advise you guys to summon if you really want to. Um, I normally don't do it for top legendary summon banners, but, you know, these units are super hyped. They're and I mean, their animations are really good. So honestly, I would say they're, you know, it's really kind of worth it. So that is going to do for today's video. Like I said before, I am going to put the one Escanor as well as the first year anniversary for 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross video after this one. And I'll see you guys. Oh, and please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you guys next time.